Hello, you are welcome again to another edition of the Windows Show. Today I'm here with one of the best female YouTubers in Ghana. Yes, I mean that. That is Faiza Abdullahi. And she has been blogging for a while and today we are going to look at her life. What has she been doing all these years apart from blogging? And even how did she start blogging? You are welcome, Faiza. Thank you. I hope you are doing great. Yes, my boss Grace. So, female YouTuber. <laughs> How, how did you start that? Well, I started off by, I like watching videos a lot. Okay. And um, I really watch videos with people saying things like, oh, this is how I started my YouTube channel. This is what I'm doing, that, okay. that. And I thought to myself, you know, I, I love to do things like this. Mm -hmm. And if somebody else can do it, why not? If okay. only I learn and try to put some things you know, into practice, maybe I can also start up my own YouTube channel so okay. and do it. So yeah. how long have you been YouTubing? Two years. Oh, okay. That's that's impressive. You know, we will come into the details of what your YouTube channel is actually about. But before we go there, let's look at your life as Faiza. <laughs> so who is Faiza? Where do you come from? Um, I'm from the Upper East region, okay. Sandima. Okay. And uh, both my mom and my dad are from the same tribe. So okay. I'm a 100% Busa. <laughs> so, oh, wow. Yeah. wow. So how did you end up in Obuasi? Uh, I was born here. Wow. Born, bred, buttered, everything. <laughs> impressive. Impressive. So you have you how, how many times have you been to your hometown? Oh, uh, Lord. It will be like four or five times. <laughs> Not that many. In all your whole life. Uh-uh, yeah. You don't mean it. <laughs> Wow. Wow, wow. I've, I've been trying to visit my hometown every year. So maybe next year we'll go together. Yeah, you're all good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right, so let's look at this. So when you, you came to Obuase, when you say you were born here. I was born here. Yes, so uh, where did you have your education? Your, okay, so your early childhood for my education? Yeah. JHS, okay. I went to Abusko Royal International. Oh, okay. I think people who are in Obuase knows this So place. You, you started from primary <laughs> to JHS at Abusko? Yes. Oh, okay. And I actually started from KG, like from Abu School. But when I was in class four, we moved to Borga. And that's where I went to school at Mount Sinai in Borga. Oh, okay, Mount Sinai. Yes, after Mount Sinai, I came back to Abu School, like JHS 1, okay. and continued and finished Why Abu did you school. go to Borga? My dad. My dad went on redundancy and we decided oh. to, you know, go and live there. Oh, okay. Yeah. SHS, I went to Wesley Girls High School, Cape Coast. Oh. Yes. Oh. <laughs> I'm a gay uh, girl. One of the best in Ghana. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's no wonder you are one of the best YouTubers in Ghana. Oh, After you went you. to one of the best senior high schools in Ghana. <laughs> thank you. Do you have any position during your time? Oh, uh, no. I guess you were the shy I type. was a senior common floor member. I did nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard that. I've never heard something like a senior floor, Come member, on floor, member. Come on floor member. You know, that that's a very huge push. It is very, you know, very interesting. It means you didn't do anything. Yeah, okay. <laughs> but I was mostly into sports. Okay. Um, handball. Uh, okay. Specifically, I was the captain. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So let's let's let let's go back again. From GHS to SHS. Then university. Uh, yes, then to university. Where? Yeah, university. UCC. UCC. University what what course did you do? Um, I did tourism and hospitality management. Where, where did you have your first employment? Where? Uh, engineering AG. training center. So you have been working at AG since mm. you completed university? Yeah, after national service. How long have you been working at AG? Mm, right after national service. I think I it was in August or so. I'm not really sure. But I think we finished our service on Friday. Okay, which year was that? Uh, that was 2015, I think. Okay. And I think on the Saturday, I was on the road. Okay. And one thing about where I am is the engineering training center. Okay. You know, we are not officially under AGA anymore. It's okay. now operating like, you know, malaria control in the oh, hospital. Okay. Good. I never knew. At that time, the national health insurance scheme was changing to biometric. Okay. And we we're going around training people. My boss was one of the people who were part of the team okay. to do so. And I decided, you know what, after national service i'm just home okay. and they kind of needed my help i was like let me just join in i hadn't been fully employed then okay so for my work when he saw me work you know we traveling were three people my boss another guy named okay. prince i don't know if you know prince but prince he's what? really really known here um prince Ampofu or prince Abuaje? Abuaje. Okay. good okay. i went with prince Abuaje and my boss okay and we moved around so when he saw the way i worked he was like okay you can easily join me here then that's how i started you know oh, okay so wow. our office is now officially hld 
you know. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Himalayas so you've, you've been there since 2015? Yes. Wow. So after two years, he said, okay, why don't I start uh, YouTubing? <laughs> so let's go back to the harder part of your life, okay? <laughs> yeah. You said your father went to redundancy around I was, class four? Yeah, I was in class four then, but I don't okay. really remember the year. So <laughs> that means he has officially left the mine? Yes. And he took you along? Uh, to Borga. To Borga. So why did you come back? Um, my, my dad got very sick. Okay. And one day we were just at home and... I don't know what happened. He just woke up and was like, let's go back to Obuase. You know, wow. he built a house here. Okay. And we, my mom and I, we still think about this. When he went to Redendance, why did he not come back to his house in Nakapuri? So yeah. why did we have to go all the way to Borga? But one day he just woke up and was like, let's go back to Obuase. Okay. So he drove us back to Obuase. This is a one day notice on so my, wow. my school, nothing. Nobody, nobody was noticed that, you know, we are coming back. My school didn't hear of anything. All they knew was my dad was bringing us back. He brought us back, said he was going back for the rest of the items, and he died. Which is, which is really odd because like, long, he was preparing he, that. How, when he came and left you here, how long did it take him before he died, when you went back to him? Immediately he reached there, less than a week. Yeah, less than a wow. week. Yeah. That means probably if he hadn't brought you back and he had passed on whilst you were at Bulga, you wouldn't have come you back. See, that's the thing, because we have this house here and my family was in the house then. Okay. So imagine if my dad had died in the north whilst we were there. They would have taken, they would over, have the taken over the house. Even wow. when he brought us back, it was really hard for us to take control of the house again. Because I'm an only child, you know, we, it was a boy and a girl. <clears throat> because, you know, I have a brother, and it, uh, it's my brother and I. My brother passed away when I was really young. Okay. So it's just me. And you know, nerdness and yeah. girls. Yeah, it's girls, like I'm not yeah. a human being in their eyes. So in a way, they felt, you know, there's no son to fight over it. Um, they just didn't know I was worse than a son, I guess. Wow, wow, <laughs> wow, wow. So you came back to Obuasi and you had to continue on. And you went back to Abusko. I went back to Abusko, JHS. How did you find your education? Um, you know, there was a, a, a serious um, change. Um, my proprietor was kind of a little pissed because it was like I, I was doing so good in Abusco before we left. So he thought maybe by the time I, I came back, you know, the knowledge and all the things that I may have learned may have kind of gone down. Okay. But when I came, I just revived myself, GHS one, and I was already doing well in school. So she, she relaxed for me. So financially? <laughs> What was your mother doing to look after you? <sighs> that is the hardest, hardest okay. part of my life. I don't like talking about this because it makes me look weak. <laughs> I don't know. I don't like feeling vulnerable, you know, in front of people at all. I even like it when people just presume that I just jumped into money but or something. But it's good, you know, it's good, it's good, <laughs> but... it's, it's good. We hear some of these stories, uh, yeah. you know, because uh, somebody might be passing through the same Issue circumstance now, yeah. as you. And, you know, as you were able to pass through it, it could give these people enough strength to also to be able to stand. So let us see about it. No, okay. How did you pass through okay. financially after the, the, uh, the passing dad, of your okay. dad? So what happened was, you know, my dad just passed away and my mom also got really sick. You know, she was having heart issues and all of that. So my mom wasn't working. Okay. And all of a sudden, I transitioned from that rich sports kid to... Yeah. Poverty yeah. at once. It wasn't even my parents are not doing well any anymore. Just no transition, nothing. Just from up to and down. The weirdest part is the first people I lost was my family before my friends. Okay. Because my family turned on me so darn fast. Like, That's the what, family. My dad's side it? of the family. Your dad's side of the family. Yeah, they turned okay. on me so fast. It was miraculous. It was just wow. amazing how because I didn't know blood could do that. All they, what they cared about was my dad's house, my dad's money, my dad's car. His, his brother even sold his car. We don't know even how it ended up. Um, they were just, it was, it was really terrible for wow. me at that time. We had no money. So there was actually a time in my life where my mom will go days without eating. My mom will force me to eat some gari with water and salt, mix it together and force me to eat it because that's the only thing we had. You were attending a private school at that time. You, you, you still had to pay school fees? School fees, yeah. How did you manage with the school fees? Because <laughs> you, you, you were hardly eating in the house. So how, how were you able to also manage okay. with the school fees of a private school? Yeah, I was sacked from school all the time. 
and uh, <laughs> my proprietor had um, a relationship with my dad okay. and um, his brother I don't know if you would know him his name is Mr. Dixon our people went to Abusco would know him okay he was the one going around taking our studies fee uh, uh, food uh, money for our canteen fee and all of that and he would look at me he'll be so sad he was so sad he would just let me be just let me wow. be he wouldn't ask me anything but you know there were other teachers who go around who obviously sack me yeah, and all sure, of those sure, things sure. how i managed to finish school like only god knows because my school fees everything my mom was we were jumping from one of my dad's friends to the other asking for help and all of that sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't and that's how my mom managed to gradually help me to finish school seems you are feeling very emotional <laughs> Cool down for me, cool down for me. So, now you'll be able to complete. JHS. JHS. That is the easiest part. Yeah. So because SHS. you're now going to SHS. Good. Where you need to pay school fees. <laughs> yes. And we all know that Wesley Girls. <laughs> the big school. Big school with big money. Yeah. With rich people. Of rich people. <laughs> and you are going to mix with them. Yes. How did you pay your first school fees? Your admission fees? <laughs> admission fees. So, mm. what happened was... Um, you know, when I even got my results and I, it happened that I got a school. Okay. There was this neighbor who told my mom, ah, Mukramu Nishio, like you don't have anything. So uh, doesn't how you take it? So take your kid to maybe CKC or somewhere else. And my mom was like, okay, CKC is a very good school. But she was like, no, you can't just name a school for my daughter because you okay. think we are so poor, we cannot okay. afford anything. Okay. So she'll find a way. Now at that time, my dad's brother, the one I just brought up that, you know, he sold my dad's car and was taking over my dad's okay. money and all of that. He had also taken over our house. He was taking money from the tenants and all oh. of that for himself. Wow. So at that time, finally, this man, out of the blue, nobody sacked him from the house. One day he just woke up, packed his things and vanished from the house. Wow. Just like that. So by that time, my mom was now free to kind of give the one of the rooms out, out. for rent. Mm. And that's how I entered SHS 1 first term. Now, second term is, an, is, is, is a, a whole different, different story. story. Because I went back second term and we're sucking school fees. And I, I had no money. I knew if I come home to, I won't get any money. Mm -hmm. Because who are you going to talk to? My mom, she doesn't have anything to give me. Wow. And I don't have any family to rely on. What do I do? So what I did was I went to see the headmistress, assistant headmistress, Mrs. Wilberforce. So, no, sorry, Miss Wilberforce. Cut the missus out. Okay. okay. Um, my assistant headmistress, her name was uh, Miss Wilberforce. And I went to see her and I asked, please, why do we sack school fees? And she was about to get annoyed because who, who dares ask a question mm -hmm. like that? And she was like, so that your parents will know we are serious and they will come and pay the school fees. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, with me, my, it's just my mom. She's not working. We don't have money. If I go home right now, I won't, I won't, I won't be able There's to no come back. There's no way you will yes. even get the money. So the whole theory is I'm actually going to get stuck at home. And maybe in the next year, I'll be pregnant with mm -hmm. maybe two mm -hmm. or three kids. And she was just sitting there looking at me. She was just amazed how I was able to walk up to her like that. And <laughs> amazing thing is they had this um, Methodist um, scholarship or okay. so. she told me, okay, bring me your, your results or something. And she, with my own teacher, who was my um, food and nutrition teacher, okay. came together and they decided to help me get that, that scholarship. scholarship. Wow. So for the rest of my education, I completed Wesley with, Girls High School with the Methodist Scholarship. You are still watching the Windows Show. Let's go for a virtual break. We'll be back soon.
You are welcome again to the Windows Show. I'm still here with Faiza Abdullahi. So after after secondary school, now you are planning of going to the university. Yes. Uh, do you work? You know, usually in Ghana, when in you complete Ghana, okay. SHS, you try to find <laughs> ways to sort yourself to out. Did you do anything like that? Yes, yeah, I went what, back what to Abu School to teach. Oh, okay. For how long? Uh, for that, you know, I think we had a, a one year interval or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I didn't teach for that long. You know, I stopped teaching midway, okay. you know, preparing for school and everything. And, um, you know, when the results came, I had done well and I wanted to go to the university. Okay. My mom started crying. She was like, can't you just wow. go to nursing? Can't you just go to teaching? teaching. Even the university, when you finish, you don't get any job to yeah. do. Have yeah. you seen this person's kid, that person's kid? I was like, uh-uh, I want to go to the university. Okay. I remember threatening my mom, if you do not <laughs> take me to the university. That was cruel, you know. You know, this woman has <laughs> yes. suffered so much for you. I was, I was just, you know. Desperate lit, to go desperate to the university. Desperate little girl okay. to go to the university. Okay. And we had no money then, so okay. I, I didn't know. Yeah, like, so that's where the next question is going to no come from. Then. You had no money, and I want to go to university. Okay. And you said I'm going to learn tourism. I'm and going to learn hospitality. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, so even how I arrived yeah, at tourism and hospitality is a whole new thing. Yeah. So let me just take you back. You know, I always get a timeline a little bit okay. for you. Know, I've never talked about this, you know, to anyone. And I don't right. even know why I'm even talking about this in the Talk interview. So me. maybe even from JHS, you know, the timeline, we realized yeah. I was forgetting yeah. some of the timeline. Yeah. But, you know, the story did happen. just that the timeline gets foggy a little. Okay. But I, if I can remember correctly, I just don't want to make any mistake. I think mm -hmm. when my results came, I went to my dad's friend. His name is also Abdullah, like us. Okay. So I went to him. He's in Wawasi. And I told him, he should please give me money to go and buy forms. UCC forms okay. and Legon forms. Okay. I don't know the question he asked me. Mm -hmm. was like, okay, so if you can't buy the forms, what makes you think you can pay the school fees? <laughs> yeah, I, th I think that's a logical <laughs> question. <laughs> because, at that time, okay. I wasn't dealing with logic. I was never a logic kind of girl. Okay. Look at my life. Okay. If I was logical, do you think I'll be here right now? Probably not. No. Yeah. Nothing about me was logical. Okay. I told him he should just let me take the first step, buy the forms. I was mm -hmm. like, okay. So I think our time was like 100 cities or so. I'm not okay. sure. Okay. Yeah, our time was like 100. And he gave me money for two. Okay. So I bought UCC and Legon. Mm -hmm. And I played tennis. I came okay. to the sports club to play tennis. You know, I like hanging out with old men and women. <laughs> so we're playing tennis and I was trying to choose a course. And I felt, oh, let me just choose um, home economics, you know, um, degree home economics. Yeah. And one of the tennis play, uh, players, the, one of the men came to me like, what are you doing? I was like, oh, I'm, I'm, I want to choose a course for UCC. I was like, oh, choose hospitality. It has to do with hotels. Okay. I was like, okay, that's good. I can't do, totally do that. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I was like, okay, tourism advertising seems like a really good thing to do. Yeah. And it's in uh, my course, the course that I did, you can easily, you know, enter into that. Okay. I was like, okay, let me choose that. But with Legon, I chose, um, I chose some courses, you know, those, they are single courses where they're social work, blah, 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 mm, those mm, kind of mm, things. Mm. Like you choose yeah. the succession and then they, they give you the combination later if they, okay. uh, they yeah. So when the, the admissions came, I had gotten uh, hospitality with UCC, but Legon gave me social work with linguistics and something. Okay. So I just waited until I was like, okay. Yeah, you prefer? I can't just go to school for going to school sake. Okay. I need something that immediately after school, I can do it. something with. Okay. So I, okay, hospitality is a professional course. Yeah. So let me just go and do hospitality at UCC. I guess my best, my better judgment <laughs> because okay. we all know about UCC. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the pressure. Very <laughs> tough. Nobody wants yeah. that. But I was like, no, let me go to UCC because that course seemed like it would be good for me. Okay. So I chose to go to UCC. All right. <laughs> you decided to go to UCC. Yes. So... Faiza now is going to university, but you want to know how it was, was so able hard. To pay. <laughs> it was so hard even getting admission for SHS, and now you're going to university. <laughs> who are even paying more than what they were paying way back at SHS? Hmm. How did you pay your admission fees? Thank you. So the very first time I entered, that I was about to go. I think if let me give you a, a timeline here. 
if tomorrow is mm -hmm. the deadline for payment, mm -hmm. it's today now and okay. it's the morning. Okay. And Pfizer is going crazy. And you still haven't gotten anything? Nothing. Okay. I was working, I work from Akapori, so only the people in Nambuase would understand yeah, it. But yeah. I work from Akapori, so okay, I work okay. from Akapori so to Boite. Okay. Uh -huh. And then when I reached her place, they were talking about this gold line of Boise who helps, you know, um, widows and orphans and all of that. And I was like, okay. Walked back took my forms everything mm -hmm. and i was talking on the way so somebody went home to tell my mom your daughter is, is going, going crazy. crazy and what was happening was i was busily insulting god because you know i had a fight with him in the morning i okay. didn't understand why he was so mean to me him. yes because i was like why was my only crime being born or what like what do you want from me god what do you like you know when i can actually relate with that yeah. i can actually relate with that i was busily yeah. fighting god from the way so this woman saw me on the way and decided to rush home to tell my mom that her okay. daughter was going crazy. So she ran outside to find me. And by the time she was, you know, outside the house, I had already met her because I was returning from, okay. you know, um, Boite. I reached home, picked my phone, and everything. I said, Mom, this is what's going on. They said there's this man who, can, um, who does this for people. So let's go and try and see. <clears throat> my mom started walking with me. Well, of course, we didn't have money, yeah. okay? So that's we decided to go back. Now, let me not forget my own school mother in Westy Girls. Her name is Ama Akuma. I'll mention her name every single day. Okay. Because what that she time do? she was in Legon. Okay. So she called this friend of hers, you know, this man, who is also an Abdullah. You see how Abdullahs were helping me, which was really weird. Okay. All the male Abdullahs I've met in my life were just helping me. Wow. It was as if my dad was just talking to them like, you know. Go and support this go girl. Go and support this yeah. girl. And this man called me and said, okay, Amma called me. She said, you need help, but I can only help with this. So he gave me just half of the tuition. Yes, okay. Good. So I needed half. That same day, this is the miracles happening that mm -hmm. very same day, which is really odd. Mm -hmm. And I went to this man and his name uh i i think most people in obuasi know chairman him p. but yeah i don't Is know if he wants his name to be mentioned but he's chairman p yeah yes i went to him and the very first time he had seen me okay so with my mom and everything and when i went there he was busily working you know busy yeah, the like, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Was busy working and I was like, yeah, well, yeah, 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 what do we want? What, why are we here? I was like, okay, my name is Pfizer. I have finished the um, SHS and I want to go to the university, but I don't have money. So I was like, okay, let me see your results. And I was like, oh, this is what you got. Which school did you go to? I was like, mm. Wesley Girls. So I was like, okay, if my own nephews cannot get this and you, you can get this, this, you are going to school. Oh, okay. <laughs> so wow. he gave me the rest of the tuition. Okay. Added it and I went to pay. That day. That day. The miracle happened wow. in a day. Two different miracles happened wow. in one day whilst wow. I was busily fighting God. And they did. They, they. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to go to school. I went to him to thank him and everything. So he was okay. like, oh, okay, so you're going to school. Take something small and oh, go okay. with it. So okay. that's what I bought my provisions with. Okay. And I had to, you know, make sure my provisions, I'm able to stretch it through the entire through the time. Whole semester. And I'm a, I'm a sports girl, so I okay. play handball, tennis, so sports too. You know, university sports, they, they give you money. Okay. Okay, so I wasn't now doing sports oh, just for okay. fun. Now I was doing sports out of necessity. Because you have to make some money from yes. it to survive. Yes, whichever wow. way. So I started, you know, um, with sports. I was very careful with my expenditure and all of that um that time gradually things were gradually coming up because we also had our house my mom was taking some small, okay, small some money rent, now okay. some rent money and you know how rent is in a bus it's really cheap yeah, at that yeah. time it's like 600 cities for two years or so when you answer no one yeah, no, no, yeah like that's that, all. That all yeah so wow. it wasn't that much but you know there's uh, there was still a little support okay sometimes i'll call sometimes i'm lucky sometimes i'm not lucky okay and um I think level 100 was done. Yeah. You know, I play tennis. So yeah. I was always coming to tennis and, and all okay. of that. And I was meeting these um, people, especially AGA workers. Okay. I, I, I'm sure I was married to almost 10 men in AGA. <laughs> because we're like, my wife, how are you? I was like, I'm fine. Though. How are you doing? I was friends with everybody. We're like, okay. my wife, how are you? All of those kinds. Of, I was really, really friendly. Okay. So like, when the, when I'm going to school, I'll be like, well, I'm going to school. Someone will be like, oh, just take 100 cities. Just take 50 oh, cities. Just okay. take this. Yeah. Okay. So out of that, I was You're getting, get yeah. Yeah.
All right. All right. So let's look at how you're able to pass through it. Now, you know, you make some little money from sport thing, you know, playing tennis. Yeah, and sometimes that's friends. So second year, your school fees came from the rent and the friends or what? How did you pay that one? Still, tennis. So the My money tennis was so friends good. and yeah, the money was that good. They were oh, all okay. really rich. You know, tennis is you know for rich yeah, people. Yeah, for, for rich and people. And it wasn't when I say rich men, people, you know how Ghanaians are. Every successful lady passed me some sugar daddy or something. Okay. Please, it's not like that. Okay. Even we had older women. I was that kid, that kid that you know I worked with adults a lot. They okay. gave me advice. I made a lot of mistakes. My own mates didn't like me. You know, adults really vibed with me. Yeah. That's how come I matured really fast. Okay. And I guess with them, you know, you talk to them they give you advice and sometimes you know take this take that so it wasn't only men giving me money but sometimes my own tennis mates who were okay. playing tennis with me they are older we, i had this doctor who used to help me out she was a doctor at bryant mission okay. and that's how it went yeah so the whole of the the remaining three the, the, years from from level 200 to 300 only god knows till date i don't know how i managed to finish school because okay. sometimes you go somewhere and a door opens for you sometimes you go and the door closes okay so you move on to the next person to ask for help sometimes still my dad's friends are still so you're moving just, around you're just relying on the mercy of other people other people okay. so whether i was going to make it to school or not it was that okay. and i remember level 300 I nearly um, deferred because that time, you know, things were getting very rough for almost everyone in Obuasi. Okay. You see how the whole thing went. If my my story had played out the time AGA went down, mm -hmm. it would have been a, a different story. Yes, because Probably you wouldn't technically have AGA workers Faiza took here. me through school. Okay. okay. <laughs> AGA workers took me through school. Okay. So level three, I nearly deferred. We had this tenant in our house who wanted to pay as I told you, the same 600 issue for whole two years and uh, I didn't have the tuition. My roommate gave me money to pay for that. Your university roommate? My university roommate. Wow. Her name is Abigail. Okay. Abigail gave me money to pay for my tuition fee. I, she used, I used to wear her clothes, her sandals. I couldn't afford anything. Like I was that level of, you know, poor, even wow. in the university. Yes. She used to give wow. me uh, sandals and all of that. So they two are really good friends. Okay. And she paid for it. Later, I paid back, definitely, you know, when the tenant finally paid. But it wasn't that bad as SHS okay. anymore. Wow. So you're able to pass through with the help of and support from other people. And then you complete in 2014. Yes, and then okay. national service. And then national service. Where did you have a national service? I first got my service at um, Konongu Jasu or something. Okay. But I went to Kumase. Mm -hmm. um, to change it to municipal. When I went there, there were a lot of people Which there. Which municipal was it? It was municipal. Okay. Uh, there okay. were a lot of people there, but fr uh, frankly, I met some reporters. They were coming to interview the man. So they just met me and were like, why, why, why are you here? I was like, I'm coming to um, change. So I think they interviewed me uh, okay. for a radio or something, something short. And then through them, I entered fast because there were a lot of people outside. Oh, okay. So they, we were like, oh, we have a friend standing outside. What's me like, was I was like, yes, I would go. Because I wasn't asking for a reposting oh, okay. because I don't like Konongo. It was because I can't afford it. I couldn't afford it. How do I rent a, a house? How do I travel to a place I know nobody? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I don't have any parents to give me money or food. So if okay. you just post me anywhere, who's going to help me? All right. <laughs> so the life, your life has actually been very uh, challenging yeah. from the beginning. I will, I will, when we come back from our break, I will know when the problems actually stopped and when you started to realize that now I'm of myself. myself. All right, you are still watching the Windev Show. Let's go for this short commercial break. We'll be back soon. Mm -hmm. You're welcome back to the Windev Show. I'm still here with Faiza Abdullahi, a YouTube blogger, and one of the best in Ghana. I mean that too. So, Faiza, uh, now you've completed university and you have now been posted to Obuasi Municipal for a national service. So where were you actually working? I was posted at a youth employment agency. Okay. And uh, okay. what I did was, you know, I live at Akaporiso. Okay. And sometimes you have to take two um, cars. So okay. from uh, Trotro from Akaporiso to Boise or Boise to Municipal. So mm -hmm. sometimes I had this neighbor, her name is Joyce. Okay. I used to go to her for help for lorry uh, bus fare mm -hmm. to give it to me. I take one to town and rather walk shortcut. But then how much were they paying you? 
we, we have now started service. Ah, and I okay. think our service, we got uh, 30, um, uh, 350 cities or so. Oh, okay. But you know how service money was like? Yeah, like sure. two months, three months, sure, I'm not sure, seeing anything. Sure, sure. <laughs> yeah, and uh, that's, I was going that way. And there were okay. days that luckily I had money on me. Okay. You know, we are practically brushing through my life story here. Okay. So I know there are a lot of details that we cannot, you, you go, cannot go into. into yeah, but yeah. there are, you know, <laughs> stories yeah, for stories yeah, in all the stories. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, that's how it was basically like. Like, you know, oh, going okay. to the workplace. Wow, wow. So, finally, you search for one year, mm -hmm. and it's time to search for a job. And you ended up... I didn't search for a job. Yes, that's the surprising <laughs> part. You know, just finished with uh, National finished Service. finished service on Friday, started working on Saturday. On Saturday, how did that happen? Because I just joined in, you know... That time I wasn't getting paid though. That's the thing. When we finish uh, uh, national service, I know we have this hope of just getting into an office and start making money every okay. month and all of that. Imagine somebody like me with my background and then I've been told that even if I want to help out on that um, uh, training program, okay. I will still not be paid. Oh. Okay. Not be paid. And I was like, it's better than being at home. How they were already friends. <laughs> you okay. were friends with them? Yes. Oh, okay, so, okay, 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 okay. Level 300, I did my uh, attachment, attachment over at the, oh, the sports okay. club. Oh, okay, so you, you've created so, that connection I, Yeah, and with tennis. Them I grew up on the sports oh, okay, club. So I was this poor kid who was playing games for money and okay. all of that. And there okay. were times, you know, AGA kids had this chip where they yeah, went yeah, for food. Yeah. So what I do is I come early in the morning, play tennis with them. And some people, you know how some people, their parents will write too. And it'll yeah. cross to four. <laughs> they'll oh, take okay. food and give me some to eat. Oh, okay. So I couldn't afford to even play there in the first place. But my dad was a tennis player like me. And I was holding oh, okay. his old racket. That's what I was playing with. So wow. the coach was like, you know, I know your dad. And I know he's breaking protocol here. But, you know, so just let me play. Wow. So I play with the kids. They wow. give me food. Wow. I come back So that with created it. a connection yeah, between you and the training center. and everything. Yeah, so you and just told them of, yeah. you could work there. And they said... We when I even told them I wanted to work there, they were like, AJ is going down. They are closing the place down. Okay. So this and this is the program he has ahead of him. So okay. if I would like to join, I will not be paid. And you said yes. Yeah, it was with Prince Abwaje and my boss. I was like, yes. How long go. did you work there before they start paying you? Because <laughs> you cannot just be working there forever without... Even though he salary. told me I will not be paid, okay. I went on a trip with them. We went to uh, through Asante region okay. and um, Western region or so. And when we even finished, every week, you know, they were giving us food. Okay. Every location we reached, they would, at least jollof rice beer they would sell for people to eat. Okay. They were giving me food and that's all I cared for. The food. That was the most important wow. part right wow. now. At, at least finished, it made you stay alive. Good. When yeah. I finished, even Prince Abwaji himself gave me money. Oh, okay. And my boss was like, you know what, you did really well when you were with us. So you need to take some, something like this. Oh. So even though I was told I would not be paid throughout the trip, at the end of the day, both Prince Abuaje and my boss gave me money. As I told you, AJ had gone down. The whole place was empty. Okay. Nobody was working there. And my boss was like, you know, go home. And if AJ maybe revise or something good comes our way, then okay. I'll call you again. Okay. I was like, okay, the place is empty. I can come and sit at the place and help clean up the place. So I basically started then as a cleaner. He actually didn't tell me to clean. He just told me, just come and sit at the place and make sure the office is, every place is okay. And then when you even that. decided to do that voluntarily? Yes. And you didn't agree on any financial? Nothing. Okay. Nothing. Okay. So I was just working. Wow. I just liked the fact that I had left home and I was going to do something in town. Imagine sitting home after, you know, sitting home after national service. Yeah. I know a lot of unemployed youth will relate to this. Okay. Or be able to say, hey, now we're going to Juma. Those kind of mm -hmm. things. Like, they mm -hmm. just want mm -hmm. to know. And mm -hmm. I just didn't want to sit home because I know myself. If okay. I had sat home, I would have been stuck home. You Who would was have going been getting this opportunity. Yeah, who are you going to so, meet? First of all, there's something called sacrifice. Yeah. You decide, okay, let me sacrifice my time. Though it's not for money. But it's for a big opportunity, which is good. Coming. So, how long were you there? I was there cleaner? for almost like six months or as so. A cleaner. Yeah, or no, just what, taking he charge didn't hire of the whole place. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's basically my job yeah, at the end of the day. Yeah. <laughs> yes. But then after six months, I think AG was coming to train people. Okay. I think it was a. It was a. 
a district thing. It, people brought um, the Nananom also brought yeah. people okay. and they trained them in warden of application and yeah, auto electrical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You remember, heard of it. Yeah, right? was it today was even God. invited to cover God. that program. So that time, you know, work was coming in and my boss was like, Oh, I need somebody like to coordinate the courses and the course coordinator and all of those things. And Obviously, you he would have, yeah, he was he was going to definitely look for somebody. Yes, but you were not ready. What was there to look for? Okay. The person is has finished. Your cleaner has finished in mm -hmm. university. Mm -hmm. Like, who are you looking for? Wow. So it was just a chance opportunity. that I was just there. The the issue was I was there. You so were it was, there it was, at the time. At the right time. You were needed. And that yeah. was. Yeah. So now let's come to the. <laughs> YouTube in aspect of your life. <laughs> okay. So you already right. know I do cake and makeup, right? I've been to my Instagram. Okay. And I started by learning makeup. I know. I had okay. this thing where people were complaining like Ghanaian girls and now everybody wants to do makeup. Okay. But makeup practically saved my life. How? Like for real. How did you save <laughs> You know, what I did was I decided, you know, whilst I when I returned from that trip where we went around to okay. train people and the money that was given to me, I decided to go and learn makeup. At what time were you learning? Because you were still going to the office to take So we bit. had come fresh. Okay. The office wasn't officially open for me okay. to now start. So we had just arrived. I think we were supposed to rest for a week or so. Okay. And I called this lady, Coco Diva Makeovers, and I told her I just have one week to learn. Okay. One week. You know, people learn makeup something like three yeah, months and those yeah. things. I was like, mm -mm, I only have one week. So I went to her for a one one class and I finished the class fast and came back to Obuase. So even though I was in the Where office. Did you go? I, I I went to Kumase. Okay. Yes. Okay. I came back to Obuase. So I was doing this makeup for people who call me. You know, what money is not as big as a crown money. Yeah, sure, sure. But every money I got, I put I put it together and gradually I was able to get enough to go and learn cake making and decorating. Wow. That's two one week because all of these things are things that I, I, I get to do when I have any kind of break or maybe okay. there's a travel, okay, you've been working for this number of months, just stay away from uh, home for one week or okay. something. That's the only the chances I got to learn something. Okay. And I learned to, I uh, went to um, Takara Day then to learn cake. So the reason why I said makeup saved my life was now cake then became the the, the the part of like it's just the whole, all of me is cake you know youtube i'm known for cake yeah, i am okay. all about cake okay and like cake i started my cake business and from there it's like things got better and better and so you're making you're preparing cakes for people yes during maybe weddings orders. Orders, yeah. i do orders. wedding cakes birthday cakes whatever cupcakes I even teach people who come to me one on one. They want to learn how to make you cake. Just I teach them. them and you I charge teach them, them and I I teach them. Okay. So wow. makeup led me to cake. So now I don't do makeup to take money. I just do it on YouTube. Okay. But it led me to cake. My wow. passion. Wow, wow, <laughs> that's so interesting. So you've been doing this for the past two years. Um, cake making. No, or, no YouTube. YouTube. Yes. Yeah. What is your inspiration? What inspires you? Why YouTube? YouTube. You see, YouTube is a platform that a lot of people can show, you know, their skills, okay. they can relate to people, they can talk to people. Okay. And I feel you can be good at your own corner of the universe. You can be good in Obuase, but if you're good, you're good in your room. Yeah. But with YouTube, it gives you this platform to show the world what you can do. Okay. A more broader um, platform. So I just wanted to show the world what I could do and also to teach people how to do these pastries and cakes and those things. I actually started thinking about home economics students because I was like, you know what? It was very hard for me to even go to cake school. Cake school okay. is expensive. Okay. And I know uh, most caterers really hide their recipes because they feel they've paid a lot of money to go okay. and learn them. Yeah. But I felt, what about the little me? Who is in the house? Who wants to do something? But all she has is some flour and margarine. And she doesn't have money to go to a cake school. Okay. What about that little me? Okay. If only by God's grace she's able to bundle some small credits and she able to learn, watch a video, she can, she learn, can learn, learn the recipe and do it. It might save somebody's life. Where do you see yourself in the next five years? Oh, big things. You know, as I told you, I'm not realistic at all. Okay. I don't even use my current situation to even judge my future. Okay. I'm always dreaming big. Wow. So yeah, I see myself having my own maybe makeup line or something okay. i see myself having a big cake shop okay. and a big cake factory okay. and i see myself doing better in my work too i'm a trainer 
at the training center, okay. safety and all of that. So I see myself, you know, still doing that. I also kind of dreamt of opening, you know, a school. Okay. That focuses more on talent and creativity wow. than theory. Wow. You know, we grew up in the theory field. Chewing all the Chew smoke. and poor, forget. Yeah. Chew, poor, forget. I'm like, no. Ghanaian kids are so talented that immediately I'm born in Ghana. I just feel sad. I'm like, oh my God, your talent is going to die. If you can dance, your talent is going to die. Wow. If you can sing, your talent is going wow. to die. So I feel like we need a place where we can hone that skills you know, in them. Okay. Focus on the art and the creativity. Are you married? No, I'm single. <laughs> Are you dating? <laughs> no, I'm not dating. Are you searching? No, I'm not searching. <laughs> I'm <Okay>. content. <laughs> You're content with I'm her? I'm just stage in my life where like, I see couples yeah. and I'm like, oh, good for you, but I have business to do. <laughs> like, I have things to do. <laughs> it was nice having this chat with you, Faiza Abdullahi. And I, I, I wish all your dreams for your YouTube channel and for all your life becomes a reality. What's your last words for the you other young people want to become like you? It's quite simple. Um, I know that sometimes you have to face reality. I know sometimes people will tell you things like, you know, you are poor, you are this, you don't have this. So don't dream too big and all of that. And I know how scary it can be. And I know we have to be practical. Okay. But the little Faisal was not practical. If anything, I was delusional. Okay. <laughs> so, and I was dreaming things that was impossible. Mm -hmm. I've been able to achieve all of those things. Wow. That means you can get there. And if wow. somebody else can do it, hell, if I can do it, obviously you can, you can do, it. do it. And yeah. I know it's going to be hard because it was hard. There were times I got stuck in my room and I cried my ass off. But you can get there. After crying, clean up your tears, walk outside and work. march into yeah. the world. Yeah. So don't give up. Just don't give up. Giving up is really not an option. Thank you very much. <laughs> we are coming to the end of another edition of the Windev Show. Today, we, I, I had a conversation with Faiza Abdullahi, one of the best female bloggers in Ghana. And she's really doing so great. Her story has really inspired me, and I know you have also been inspired. If you like this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel for more interesting videos every week. Thank you for watching today's edition of The Windev Show. Let's meet again another time. Bye.